In case you're curious, I've been using this uh, smart pen and some special paper uh, to record these videos. Uh, the pen has the capability of picking up audio and video, as you can see on the screen right now. And I usually don't pick up audio and video because it's very hard to get a decent background and get the lighting right and get the sound right. But today I'm just going to give it a try and see how it goes. And if I don't like the sound in the background, I'll stop doing it with this method. So today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about producer surplus, which we abbreviate PS. So PS is producer surplus. And the producer, the producer is the supplier. And that's something that's important to remember. So let's start off by drawing a supply curve. Quantity and price, got to label the axes correctly. Got an upward sloping supply curve. And as you've seen in the previous lectures or videos on this, if we pick some random point on that supply curve, and grab the price that goes with it, say 20, and the quantity that goes with it, say 1,000. The producer surplus is, let me change the color real quick, change it to green. The producer surplus is this area right here. And the producer surplus, think of it like profit. It's not exactly profit. There are some circumstances where it can be exactly equal to profit. And the reason why we can't call it exactly profit is because sometimes producers will operate and lose money in the short run. You might remember that from ag economics, some other class. So keep that in mind. Um, think of it as the incentive for producing. This is the reason why these farmers or whoever we're talking about went to the trouble of making a thousand of whatever these are. So now what I want you to consider is what happens to the producer surplus when the price and, of course, the quantity changes along with it. So let's, uh, let's do a new page real quick and draw a new diagram. Let's switch colors to uh, white. Quantity and price. A supply curve. This time, notice I'm not drawing the supply curve so that, well, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do it my normal way. There's the supply curve, and we have some starting price. We're going to call it P1. What the price is doesn't matter at this point. And we've got some quantity to go with it, Q1. And at that price and quantity, this triangle here is, of course, the producer surplus. Let's look at what happens if the price were to go up. So let's switch colors. And let's have a new price, P2, that's somewhere higher than the first price. And the people producing are going to respond to that. They watch the price, and when the price goes up, they respond by making more stuff. I like to say you're more excited about making something and selling it when the price is very high. And we get some new quantity that goes along with it, Q2. And the new producer surplus is everything below the new price down to the supply curve. So I'll shade in this area here. And if I shade in this area here, we see that the producer surplus before and after are going to overlap. Now what I want to point out to you is this area here where they do not overlap. In this zone here, the producer surplus after the price change is bigger than the producer surplus before the price change. And so this green area that I've shaded in is the extra producer surplus that the individual is going to get when the price went up. And we call this the change in the producer surplus, where delta is a Greek uppercase delta. We, we use that to denote the word change. So this is a Greek uppercase delta here, and we use that whenever something, whenever something changes, we use a delta. Let's do an example with some, with some math so you can see what's going on here. So let's go back to a different color, and let's go down on the page a little bit more here. Isn't that neat how it automatically scrolls down to the next page? Because I'm just drawing this on a piece of paper, right? Uh, good look at that. That's cool technology. Got a price, got a quantity, got a starting price of, say, $3. And I'm just, I'm just making a price up. It really doesn't matter what the price is. It's just an example. And we have a, uh, a supply curve sloping up. 
And at that price, the quantity that goes along with it is going to be, I don't know, let's say $10. Or the quantity is 10 units, not dollars, of course. And then let's switch colors again, and we get a new price, P2. Maybe that's, uh, that's 10. And at that higher price, our producers are going to produce more. That's the law of supply. And let's say, for example, they're going to make 20 of whatever these things happen to be. Now let's go with, uh, let's go with 30. I like 30 better. So that's quantity number two. So 30 is quantity number two. Switch the colors back here. And 10 is quantity number one. And what we're interested in is this area in between the two prices and above the supply curve because that is our change in producer surplus delta ps now a lot of times students will see this and they'll call this producer surplus that's incorrect this is the change in producer surplus and uh, let's pop to a different color here what i want to point out to you is this shape this shape right here is the area this shape is a trapezoid and the formula for the area of a trapezoid is one half of the height. And the height is, here we go, this distance here, which is the difference between the two prices, uh, multiplied by, let's see what color was I using, go back to purple, multiplied by the length of the top plus the length of the bottom of our trapezoid, where this distance here is the top of the trapezoid, which is just Q2 in this case, and this distance here is the bottom of the trapezoid, which is just Q1 in this case. So we could, we could rewrite that formula in a manner uh, if you wanted a formula to, that always kind of works that you can plug the numbers into, or you can just use the area of a trapezoid, however you want to do it. Let's rewrite that formula. Switch back to this color here. Uh, the change in producer surplus is equal to one half of P2 minus P1. It's always P2 minus P1. P2 minus P1 times Q1 plus Q2. Now you could do this Q2 plus Q1 or, or whatever because it's additive and they, they, they stay the same, right? They're always going to end up with, it doesn't matter if you have which quantity you put first, you get the same number because you're adding the numbers together. And in an earlier video, or in a later video, because I never know what order I'm going to eventually post these in or what you're going to watch these in, I'll put one of those fancy linky things up at the top so you can link to it. The change in consumer surplus is equal to the negative of one-half P2 minus P1 multiplied by the two quantities added together, Q1 plus Q2. And the important thing to notice here, let me change the color here, is this negative sign. Why? Because we're talking about the consumer, which is the demander, and demand curves slope down. So that's why the negative sign is there for the consumer surplus formula. We got a negative slope. So we need a negative sign here. Okay, so that was a little diversion back to the producer surplus. Let me take a look at the numbers we had on the other page and we'll, uh, and we'll do some math with it. So on the other page, you might want to scroll back if you want to. Uh, P1 was 3 and P2 was 10. So let's switch colors here so we can show we're doing something different. So the change in producer surplus is going to be 1 half of P2, which was 10, minus P1, which was 3, multiplied by the sum of the two quantities. So Q1 was 10 and Q2 was 30. All right, I want you to notice something real quick before we do any math, because sometimes we've got to stop and look at the setup before we go through the math. This term right here is always going to be a positive number. In this particular case, this term right here is a positive number. It could have been a negative number, and of course one half is always a positive number. So that's 
an important thing to kind of consider as you're working through this. And we can use that to figure out if we're going to end up with a positive number or a negative number for our answer, because whether it's positive or negative actually turns out to be pretty important. So let's do the math. This is just one half of seven times 40. Um, it's easier to take a half of 40, so half of 40 is 20. So this is just equal to seven times 20 which, if I'm doing the math right, is 140, and of course this is measured in dollars. And here's something that's really important to remember, is that this number, um, this number, our change in producer surplus, is greater than zero. And that tells us that the producer surplus went up. And that makes our producer happy. And that's an important thing to remember, the producer likes it when the price is higher. They want to see a higher price. If you're selling things, you want a higher price rather than a lower price. No one selling things actually wants to sell it at a low price. They may advertise if they're a, a company that advertises that they have the lowest prices. And that may be true, but they would rather be selling at a higher price. All right, that's the end of this video. Make sure you touch one of these uh, videos over here. I've got some around the screen and hit the subscribe button if you wanna make sure you catch updates as I upload them. Thank you very much for watching.